What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Bassam Hanna podcast. Today, I am so blessed to have a longtime dear friend and a powerhouse businesswoman uh, named Jamie Jenkins. Uh, so a little bit of history. Jamie and I went to university together at Ivy. Um, we built a very strong connection there, and we've kept in touch ever since. Um, I'll let Jamie do an intro of herself and what she's doing now. Uh, but Jamie, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks, Basma. I'm so excited to be here. It's our pleasure. My pleasure. Awesome. Um, so to introduce myself now, I guess, I'm the co-founder of a hair, skin, and scalp wellness brand called Everest. And we invented the first ever shampoo, conditioner, and body wash concentrates, which are 15 times award-winning, including one of Time's Best Inventions. Hey, <laughs> that's great. And obviously, there, uh, I don't think it's your whole product catalog. Shameless plug. Shameless plug, Shameless but you plug. know. That's them. They're yeah. amazing. They're honestly so good. So the, so the concept here, just for the layman's, especially yeah. you know, with all of my luscious hair. Yeah, it's so good. Um, is that this is concentrate so you add water and then it becomes like the full-blown product totally it's like su so super innovative they usually in beauty so i've been in beauty for a long time i started right. my career we're gonna talk about your history we're gonna talk about your history in a oh second. we're gonna do that oh, okay yeah, so yeah. don't go into it yet yeah. so don't these ruin are... my show jamie yeah <laughs> okay i'll save that part yeah. but yeah super unique um very innovative so traditionally a bottle of shampoo that you have you know in your shower is usually like 80 percent water in a plastic right. bottle right so my co-founder jess Jessica, who also went to Ivy with us, yes. and I started in the beauty industry, and we learned that, and we thought it didn't make a ton of sense to be shipping these heavy, water-filled, you know, plastic bottles around the world to use them in our shower. So we started to think about it a little bit differently and thought, what if you take the water out, and what if instead of water, you know, you concentrated it down, but you put it in a base of skincare ingredients, which are really hydrating for your hair, for your skin with the body wash, and for your scalp, which is where healthy hair growth starts. So that's what kind of started our innovation journey and led us to bringing this really unique product to the market. So it's not, okay, like obviously I'm pretty fascinated by all this stuff because, you know, maybe it could have saved my hair, <laughs> uh, but probably not. <laughs> uh, but it's not just that it's, it's, you've removed the water, you're also putting it in the base. So it's like, it's generally a better product than natural, than it's regular so shampoo. It's so clean and because what usually creates like the lather, like the cleansing abilities in a shampoo or surfactants, like cleansers. So they come in like powders or liquid form. So what we basically did is we took these powdered surfactants, but we wanted to make a product or like a form factor that was similar to what people were used to because we wanted to make an eco product that felt like an upgrade that rivaled high performance, you know, salon quality hair care. So we took these powdered surfactants, we put them in a base of aloe vera and glycerin, which are skincare ingredients to make them wet. And what you get is this beautiful, rich cream, almost like a body butter kind of, or a La Mer kind of texture right. that activates with the water in your shower. So you're not shipping the water, it's more compact, it's great for travel, but when it hits the water, you get this beautiful creamy lather because of all the skincare ingredients. You get this amazing fresh scent without any synthetic fragrances. And we've designed the formulas very intentionally to be super clean through and through in terms of the ingredients we choose, 100% naturally derived, vegan cruelty free, silicone and sulfate free, all of the boxes. So it really yeah. is like an upgraded product um, for your hair, skin and scalp, but also something that is a little bit more environmental. Okay, so I love that. Also, one of the things that really resonated with me while you were telling me all these fantastic effects is you can pack this way more easily totally. in, in for travel. Yeah, so that's like your whole, it's packed in, instead of plastic, we use 100% recycled aluminum tubes. Right. And that little tube is your full bottle of shampoo. It's 100 ml, and you can put it in your carry-on. Yeah, but there's no liquid, right? Yeah, like, exactly. It's not you, a liquid. Put, you put it in your carry-on. Yeah, it's it doesn't have to go in the bag. 50 washes, three to four months of shampoo, you can put in your carry-on, you can go to Europe for the summer. So and, a little goes a really long way. And so, I like, obviously the shampoo and conditioner, I'll, maybe I'll try on my <laughs> fake beard, but the body wash yeah. is something that, like, I... It's so good for the gym you can put it in your gym bag and because they're aluminum tubes they come with these little squeeze keys in them so you roll the aluminum down so it gets smaller and smaller so it's super portable that's amazing throw it in your gym bag but also like really clean formulas because often when you have water and cosmetic formulas that's what feeds the bacteria growth which is why you need to pump them full of synthetic preservatives so because these formulas are waterless we're able to make them really really clean naturally plant-derived formulas and also they have a lot of skin benefits okay obviously as a friend i'm super proud of you and Jess Thanks. like you guys 
but I'll tell, I, I want to share more about that after you kind of educate the world on your history. So sure. we went to Ivy together, awesome time. We'll talk about our favorite memories from during school, especially together. Yeah. But tell me what happened after Ivy. So after, Start from the beginning. Okay. So after we graduated, yes, um, I wanted to always work in marketing. I've always loved. Mar I was one of the few people with Ivy who I was actually interested in marketing. Yeah, <laughs> not an eye banker. Yeah. Um. So I went to go work for Procter and Gamble, which is kind of one of the greatest, you know, marketing training centers in the world. So I went to P and G for a couple of years. I worked there first in sales, which was like the best experience. I think everybody should do sales I at agree. some point in their life. It totally. was so hard and humbling and amazing. Yeah. So I did that for a year, then they promoted me to a training manager, so I trained the sales teams, which was really cool because I learned a lot about like, I don't know, psychology, persuasion, influence, changing behavior, all that stuff, which proves obviously very useful with marketing. So right. I did that for a bit, and then I moved into more traditional marketing and brand management roles at P&G. And then I always, always wanted to work in the beauty industry, so I, of course, looked to the biggest beauty company in the world, which is L'Oreal. And I worked there for almost a decade. So I wow. started in a brand management role working um, in some of their luxe brands in the luxury division. So I started on Yves Saint Laurent, now Saint Laurent Beauty um, and Cosmetics and Fragrances. And then I worked on Giorgio Armani Beauty and Prestige Fragrances. So I did that for a couple of years in Toronto. And then my husband, he also know, yes. and I wanted to move abroad for a shout bit. out to steve <laughs> shout yeah. out to steve yeah. he's amazing we love him we moved to london england for a couple years um and i, I totally forgot yeah. you did that it was oh amazing my God. it yeah. was such a it was incredible experience i am so happy that we did that especially before we had kids that's super cool yeah so i worked for l'oreal there at the global headquarters of the body shop who owned l'oreal at the time um, and did global product development which was really cool because they were trading in i think 66 different markets at the time so i had to learn all the different global preferences for fragrances and textures you know people in brazil like different textures than in japan and have different skincare you know everybody has different skincare needs but different skincare trends in general right so that was really cool doing global product development am i going too long no, I'm gonna no no man <laughs> going it's into your story it. yeah um so i did that for a couple years came back to canada when we were done in london we wanted to have our family here we have two young kids now um, so we came back to Canada, took a, a VP marketing role with the body shop here, and then after... Sorry, the body shop owned L'Oreal? L'Oreal owned the Yeah, body okay, shop. that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. They don't anymore, yeah. um, but they did at the time. So I took that role here and did like some cam marketing, but also like campaigning, like did like a animal test against animal testing campaign and led that. Um, so I had a good couple years here, and then I had my kids, mm -hmm. and I thought it was a really great opportunity to kind of start thinking about what's next and also think about first like what kind of world I wanted to leave behind for them right and also you know I think you get to a point especially with marketing when you work you know in in an office like in Toronto where you're in like kind of a satellite office you're not at a headquarters there's only like a certain limit of right. influence you have um, you're not at the right yeah you're not in the right room you're not making global decisions you're not yeah. making brand decisions I think you're you know, advising on adaptations for your market, but it's not that real strategic brand marketing that I love. Right. And that you're not in the product side at all. So I missed that and I felt like I wanted to have more impact. Um, so Jess and I got talking around that time. I think it was probably like 2018 when I had my son. Right. Um, so we got talking and it was a couple years of talking and trying to figure out, you know, we were good friends at the time. Do we want to work together, what might that look like? Um, she was at Revlon um, previously, and then she's at Leading Nude by Nature as well in Canada. So she had a lot of incredible beauty and general management experience as well. So we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do. Um, and it took a while to kind of hone in on what the idea would be, how we would execute it, what business model we thought would work. Um, so it took a little while to like refine it and, kind and, of get and started. just for people's knowledge, Jess is also a classmate of ours yeah. from the same year that we graduated. Yeah. And, Power year. <laughs> yeah. And, and Jamie married another one of our classmates yeah. named Steve. So you yeah. really liked There's our, lots going yeah, on. you really liked that <laughs> Ivy crew. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Um, for sure. Okay, so you, you get together with Jess. Yep. You guys are talking about this. You're yep. both in beauty. You're yep. both in marketing. Yep. 
Um, Jess was in marketing, right? Jess was in yeah. marketing, and then Reese, the last role she was in was more like management. Okay. General management. Right. Yeah. And then Inception. And then Inception, and it started, I think one of the reasons that we ended up developing something really innovative is because we didn't necessarily start with that endpoint in mind. Right. So when the first conversation started, like it was 2018, it was when all of a sudden there seemed to be like a swelling global awareness of the plastic waste crisis. Mm -hmm. It was all of a sudden, like we were trying to ship, Canada was trying to ship plastic garbage overseas, nobody right. would take it. And to then the all of a sudden everybody, to the Philippines, yeah. remember that? Yeah. And all of a sudden everybody's kind of starting to think, hey, like we're making all this plastic, it really doesn't get recycled. Where is it going? <laughs> I was right. kind of like, we felt like a bit of an awake awakening around this plastic waste crisis. So that's actually where it started. It was kind of seeing that shift in, you know, world needs, but also, you know, working in marketing, both of us, we were also hearing customers looking for more plastic free options. They were becoming aware. So we very much started with that in mind. And then looking to create, you know, at the very beginning, we were looking to build a zero waste beauty company. We don't use that term anymore, nor do we even identify necessarily as an eco first brand. We're very much about like the benefits of the product and the eco is our foundation. But that was where we started with that plastic waste crisis. And we didn't even know that it was going to be a product. It was like, are we going to do a refillery store? It was like, how do, at the point at that time, oh, it was like, okay. is it going to be a Sephora slash bulk, bulk barn hybrid? Like, a like bougie, you bring your bottle yeah. and you like fill up? Is it going to be oh something like that? But then we went through all these different business models and we're kind of like striking things off. Because obviously retail, super expensive. Obviously, I'm glad we didn't do that with the pandemic coming because that would have been super hard, but yeah. there's lots of great refilleries out there now, which are incredible. Um, so we looked at that. We looked at like milkman models for packaging, like being refilled and returned. We looked at pot, like little laundry pods and sheets, but they have oh, their okay. own complexities, I think sometimes with how the formulas like biodegrade. Right. So we looked at like a whole bunch of stuff. And then eventually we saw this trend happening first in another industry. It was in the home cleaning industry. We saw wasn't Blue Land. Now Blue Land's probably the leader in like the waterless, you know, powder to activate with water, like concentrates. At the time it was another brand called Supernatural. But we saw these little brands of mix at home cleaning products kind of popping up based right. on the insight that like cleaning products from your home are like 70, 80, 90% water and a small little bit of actives. Mm -hmm. So why are we shipping the water? So these companies were making little compact pods or sheets or like yeah, tablets it. of actives that you mix at home with water to Smart. make your Windex or whatever yeah. it was. So we saw that in home care and we thought, huh, like when we look at beauty, especially like shower products, it's the same. They're mostly water. If you look at the ingredient list of any, pretty much any liquid shampoo or most beauty products for that matter, you'll see aqua water as like number one, which means it's the highest percentage of the formula. Right. So we thought, okay, that's interesting. It seems like there's an opportunity here. And then there were some form factors which are starting to gain some momentum now, things like shampoo bars or, mm -hmm. or different pods. But we wanted to create something that was really close to what people were used to using. And also coming from beauty, coming from the industry, had really high performance benefits. That was kind of a you know premium salon quality alternative so that people felt you know like they wanted to lean into this more sustainable option because it was just the best shampoo it, it was ever used. it wasn't like you had to be eco-friendly or have the best product yeah. or convenience it was like yeah it just happened to be both it was like make the best shampoo people have ever used yeah. and then make it eco-friendly right so that you know because people are buying based on performance that's yeah. how the industry works also like there's a convenience factor to what you have 100 oh, that's yeah. a big piece of it too so anyway, that's the long journey we went on. And we tried, we worked with a, a really established cosmetic chemist. We tr at the beginning tried to do that like mix yourself shampoo. Like yeah. originally we were trying to do that. Really? And it was so watery and there was like bubbles everywhere and like not a good customer experience we thought. So what we ended up doing is taking those powdered surfactants yeah. um, and mixing them. I had an aloe plant in my kitchen and I was like, I wonder if we can make this into a paste. So I ended up mixing it into the aloe from Actually, the plant. Oh, and like you. this kind of works. Chemistry. Yeah, yeah. So sophisticated. This still lathers. You have this really interesting consistency that's like similar to what people are, are used to. So we sent that to our chemist and then they ended up using a base of aloe vera and glycerin to make the powdered surfactants kind of like a cream so that it's like really easy to activate What's in the shower. What's surfactant? Surfactant is like a cleanser. Got it. Okay. I just don't yeah. want to pretend like I'm like Sorry. nodding along here. I'm like, oh yeah, surfactants, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Anything like that, please ask me because yeah. I have a tendency to um, slip into that. Okay. Prior to 
the Jamie Jess combo. Do you remember a conversation that you and I had yes, in 2016? I do, when I was still at the body shop. Yeah. yeah. I, okay, so uh, rewind. <laughs> when, when I was uh, very early stage cannabis, um, and it was not popular and we were not successful, uh, I desperately needed a marketing person, marketing lead. And I was like, there's really only one phone call that I could make where I could <laughs> trust the person. And I called Jamie and I was like, yeah. Jamie, would you be interested in coming into cannabis with me? And she like raised her eyebrow and, but you thought about it. I did think I about it. I know you thought yeah, about, I it. thought about it. And then, but you were having a kid. You wanted to have a second kid. Yeah. We wanted to have a second kid. And I also knew I wanted to do my own thing too. Yeah. 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 It was, I just like. The timing I, wasn't right. I just remembered that as you were saying yeah. your story. I'm like, oh my God. Like yeah. we had, it could have been. I remember that lunch so well. Yeah. Because you were like so. Your energy, and I feel that energy now, like being in it myself. Like yeah. I'm almost like where you were at that time. But I can just remember you were like buzzing, and you were like the the opportunity that you saw. You were like on fire with excitement. I, like I, yeah. I was just trying to convince. I'm like, guys, we could, we could be like the Smirnoffs of yeah. cannabis. Yeah, I which we are now. Like yeah. we, we became that. But it was, it was. You uh, had that like belief. I can remember yeah. that, and like that's how. I think that's how you have to feel to be able to like withstand this journey of entrepreneurship. You have to be like literally like lit up by what you're doing and like so energetic about it or else it's hard. It so, is hard regardless. But Okay, so let's skip a few questions. I'll get yeah. back to those. But let's talk about the entrepreneurial journey because yeah. um, I happen to know you and Jess personally and I would have not, maybe I would have guessed that it would have been that, like, but like tell me about what makes you want to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, you wouldn't have guessed I would have gone into entrepreneurship. I probably. I mean, I thought you were you were like almost lifer into like. There's okay. a certain point where you yeah. get into like the corporate world and they pay you too much and it's yeah. just too cushy to. Yeah. To you're like right leave. though. To be fair, like Jess is a little bit different. Like she studied entrepreneurship in school. Like she had another like small venture before. Like she was more into it than me. Mm -hmm. I was very much like corporate marketing. So you're right. It probably was, a, and it even was a surprise to me. But I think. I'm not sure what changed, but I think I got to a point where I wanted to have more impact and the only way I felt like I could do it was to do it myself. But I don't feel like I naturally have that, necessarily have that entrepreneurial personality. I think I've like learned it over the couple years, but the, I, that's probably one of the learnings from the first couple years is mm -hmm. kind of like unlearning like the corporate life and like learning the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit. Right. Um, but the passion has always been there and I think that's what kind of like pulls me along lowest low and highest high of entrepreneurship? It's funny because I think, I feel like another founder told me this once, but in the beginning, I, I almost like felt them all. And right. then it kind of becomes like, you almost get, I don't want to say like you don't feel it as much anymore, but you get used to the roller coaster. So you're yeah. able to better kind of withstand the swings. Like you stay constant as the world Yeah, like does I'm less thing personally impacted by it, which is again, like coming from that like learning. I think we've won tons of awards because we have yeah. something really innovative. So we've won Times Best Inventions, Fast Company, World Changing Ideas, tons okay, of beauty but awards. Don't go, don't go too fast on that stuff. Let's okay. go one by one. What have you won? Because that is actually one of my questions. Like the highest highs or like what, what has Everest done in its short life I'll so tell you far? the awards, but I will also say those aren't my highest highs. Okay. But I will Let's tell talk them about to the you. awards. Yeah. Say them slowly, though, because you rushed through those a little okay. bit. Okay, so probably, like, one of the most well-known ones is in our first year of launch, we won Time, one of Time Magazine's Best Inventions of 2021. Right. So we launched in Feb 2021. So that was huge because it's obviously, like, all inventions, right. not just, you know, beauty, which is a big one. We also were named the following year as... Um, one of Fast Company's world-changing ideas. So those are like two non-beauty ones. And then in beauty, we've won a lot. So we won last year Cosmopolitan's for a deep conditioner, the red one. We won Cosmopolitan's best clean conditioner overall for their first ever clean beauty award. So it was the shampoo was Lola V shampoo, which is Jennifer Aniston's shampoo, won best shampoo, okay. and Everest won best conditioner. Amazing. So that was a big one for us. We also won Bird. That's massive. It's huge. Like Even the two that you mentioned before, like yeah. product of the year is, there's a lot of products. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot, a, there's there's a so lot of products. There's so much innovation yeah. on that list. So like that was a huge one. And we won Birdie's best conditioner as well. We won L Green Stars. We've won 
um, a whole bunch of different like best health awards, like, men's health, best gym bag shampoo. Come on, yeah, come on, like that's massive. Thank you. Yeah. Like we're so proud of that, and I think celebrate it, like, those. It it adds like credibility to the brand, which is like important for us is to kind of establish the brand. But for me, like the biggest high, honestly, is getting like the reviews that we get from customers. Like there's so many people who because our formulas are really pure, there's so many people who write in and say things like, I have an autoimmune condition, or I've just gone through chemo, or my, I'm aging and I feel like my hair is starting to fall out, and this is the only product that makes my hair you know, feel younger, or makes me feel like I have less hair fall, you know, all of these things, makes my hair shinier, bouncier, more youthful, all these things. For me, the customer reviews and like feeling one-on-one -on -one how it's like affected people is worth more than any award that's like the that's most powerful so and i'm not i'm not just saying that to be like try like i truly we have a slack channel so and this is a, an advice i have for like all founders because it's so bumpy and there's so many like shit storms every single day i made a slack channel for our team called good things and we just share all the good reviews oh, and all the good things so we can like so good manager like of you yeah <laughs> Fill ourselves up when it's like when you deal with all these like problems that you have every single day. I need I need to create that for my team. It's so good. We don't have a good team, a good things channel. You need mine. We it's have so a bad things channel. We're like an oh shit channel. It's like every yeah. other channel yeah. is the bad things channel, yeah. and you have the one good things channel. Oh man, see, yeah. I can learn something new every day. Yeah. Uh, okay, I gotta peek at my questions because yeah. I I can uh, answer the low. You asked me that. Yeah. What is the low? Uh, so the low, I would say, we went on like a massive innovation journey with Everest. Like we. The way that we like got to creating this product is not the way most people start beauty brands. Like normally you take something that exists in the world and you say, oh, this is a really great, I don't know, face serum. Um, you bring it to like a lab, a cosmetic chemist, and you say, can you make something like this, but maybe like change the fragrance or put this like really hot marketing ingredient in it, like less than a percentage, and then they make something like similar and then you rebrand it. Like it's a very different way of coming about creating something than the wild journey that we went on over like several years and hundreds of formulas. And by the way, we have a patent pending on this concept, which is the wa like yeah, waterless shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. How can we still patent pending? Glycerin. What's like, that? Does it just take a while to get the It patent? just takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. So we have it filed, but it's you have like Canada and US? Yeah. Okay. Global. So anyway, so we did it with innovation happened in a really backwards way to how most innovation happens. But the downside of that was like it was super challenging to figure out how to make it, how to manufacture it at scale. And we had so many manufacturing problems, especially in our first couple years, like with our supply chain scaling up and the formulas are super tricky because they're so thick, they break machinery right. sometimes, like oh, stirring really? them. It's almost like a big like mixer, like a cake yeah. mixer. And like it would like break machinery if it's one degree too hot, they get gritty. If it's the wrong, you know, a little bit too cold, they get hard in the tube. Like they're so sensitive, the formulas. So we had so many manufacturing challenges the first couple of years. So that mm -hmm. was like the biggest headache to get through that and to kind of get to the other side of that, which I'm happy to say we are now, but it was painful. Right. <laughs> well, that is like the true founder's experience, right? Like yeah. you go through like the lows of the low yeah. and you come out the other end personally like how much of a different person are you now that you're on the other side so different would you go back no you can't right <laughs> you can't go back you can't you can't go back you can't go back it's great it's it's like the school of hard knocks like you just learn by doing yeah you grow so much and like that's the best i said this to someone on my team the other day we were looking at it's our birthday it's our third birthday for everest tomorrow we're running our birthday sales starting today hey. but we were looking at like old stuff like old pictures and stuff to do kind of like a recap and it's such a sign of like growth and the journey you've been on when you look at things from even like a year ago and they're like kind of cringy yeah. <laughs> and they probably were at the time too but like you've you've grown so much since then already and that's what you hope for like you're growing so much every year you look back and you're like ooh, that wasn't great but mm. i did it anyway and then like, you learned <laughs> literally how i yeah. feel about my social media feed from like the month before oh my god honestly because like, oh you're god. improving yeah. but that's like a big honestly you're hitting on something super important and i respect that about you too is like there's really no way around this like messy middle part other than just doing it you and just gotta you just have to do it also no one gives a shit like, no, they don't. They're just like, thinking about themselves. You're worried. You're worried yeah. so much about what other people oh, think. Oh, I know. You're and so then, true. And then, and then I right. think about it. I'm like, people pay. Like, there's a there's a trillion dollar industry yeah. around 
begging people to look at what you're doing. And yeah. you think that they're going to look yeah. and like care that much yeah, and spend cares. that much. No Everybody's thinking about anything. themselves. Yeah. No 100%. one cares. Everybody's it's got so their own true. issues. It's so true. And when you think about like back to what we talked about before, about how I never like thought I would necessarily go into entrepreneurship. Part of it is because I'm such a perfectionist. Right. And I think it's really hard for perfectionists to jump into entrepreneurship because you have to go through this really long stage, which is painful of like so many imperfections and imperfect action. And you just have to kind of like live through that part. And I think for a lot of, like for myself, I thought about starting a business for probably at least five years before mm -hmm. we actually did. But that like stage of like just doing before you know that you're like an expert at it, you kind of have to like live through that stage, which is a little bit painful. Do you think that your sales experience helped you deal with like the initial rejections that come with entrepreneurship? Yes. I think it definitely did, and I think everybody should do sales experience. I, that, yeah. That's kind of what I was getting at. Is like yeah. there, there's, uh, if you aren't a salesperson naturally, yeah. get the sales experience, get mm -hmm. the training. 100%. Because if you go out on your own, you're yeah. first and foremost a salesperson. Always, yeah. And then an ops person yeah. and a yeah. finance person and whatever. Yeah. But like, yeah. if you can't sell your own product, you're... Yeah, you're screwed. Yeah, you're you fun. have to be, you have yeah. to embody that for sure. Um, Okay, family. Yeah. What is the journey like as a woman? Yeah. Like it's different, like men to women. I get it. We can all have supportive partners, but yeah. there's there's mom expectations. Yeah. And mom guilt that yeah. no one will put on you but yourself. Yeah. How is that like going through this journey? Yeah. Um. It's hard. I don't know how else to answer it other than like it's hard, but I think like it was also hard being a working mom even when I didn't have my own company because mm -hmm. it was always like my career has always been important to me. Right. Um, and I think, I guess what's a little bit different is maybe before I was better able to like leave work at work, especially because now like we all work remote, we all work from home, my whole team. Yeah. So I'm like literally working and the kids are there when they're home from school. We have a babysitter that comes but they're still around they're like seeing me work or later at night I'm like thinking about something and then I'm like actioning it so it's kind of like they're a little bit entangled at the moment and maybe it was more separate before right but I think it's been super challenging and you know you always feel guilt on both sides sure. always like you can't really sure. escape that yeah but I also try to focus on the benefits like my daughter Emery she's seven and she just is starting a business with her friend Gwen that's so like cute. and she has posters that she's like handing out this week at school like she sees it and she's so excited by it and she has so many ideas like she's getting like a front row seat to Everest being built so I have to think that's worth something I mean you're teaching them something that that cannot be taught unless it's experienced, exactly. right? Exactly. You're, like, it's funny that you say that your kid's starting, you, like, Emery's starting a, a business. My kids got this bracelet-making kit. Yeah. And they took it to school one day, and they came home, and they're like, Dad, we've got so many clients. We're selling them for $5 a bracelet. I'm I love like, it. Like, I love that you're entrepreneurial, and I'm, yeah. like, talking to them about, like, marketing and business strategies yeah. I'm like I'm like but also remember you're at school and you don't want to lose yeah, your exactly. friends yeah <laughs> like <laughs> don't, don't be, be those kids friends, yeah don't be those kids yeah because oh my, my like, one of my, my my son's like yeah one of my friends said he'd give me two hundred dollars for this bracelet I'm like stop <laughs> like stop that's enough just give it to him for free yeah, yeah that's so funny um, yeah they really do like absorb it and also like again like I am so fortunate I have an incredibly supportive partner I was just gonna bring up the, yeah. the the supportive spouse because it's so important like they have to be literally in it with you a hundred percent like they have to be a hundred percent on board you you have uh, listen I, I most of the time when I talk to people I don't know them this well but I, I I happen to know you and Steve for a very long time yeah like Steve is wildly successful in his own right so it makes it easy to be supportive but yeah. uh it is not easy to take from a guy's perspective, I'll tell yeah. you, it's not that easy to be uh, the support. Yeah, fair enough. Right? Yeah. Like, I, I, like I, I'm, I'm, Steve is probably a way better man than I am, so. Uh, <laughs> he just wants me to retire him, but no yeah. time soon. <laughs> <laughs> you might. You might. Maybe one day. Buyouts are a thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's good. It also, too, like, the emotional support, but even, like, he, what really is support 
in my opinion as well, is like he does, he has a job that makes, you know, way more money than mine, yeah. but he for also now. does for now, but for he now. also does for now, yeah. but he does 50% of the parenting and the housework and he doesn't, he really, the he kids, steps up. he steps up and our kids get to see that as well. And I also think that's important for my son to see how involved their father is and how much he participates in like the family activities. So I think it, that's another thing that I'm really happy that they're seeing like up close. Yeah. Um, okay, what is the next, like, one, three, five-year goals for Everest and for you? Great question. Like, it's hard to say. We're growing a lot right now. Really? Yeah, which is really exciting. Um, Can I ask revenue numbers? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you when we're not filming. Okay, fine. But really exciting yeah um some super exciting growth so love to see that it's been you know a journey of like testing like different messaging and refining the product so really happy to see that like incredible momentum behind the brand right now and people Amazing. loving it and coming back and being super loyal so, and we have an incredible team that was also like a huge journey we have how many people are you guys so far so we have three full-time plus okay. jess and i so there's five of us that's like I don't, i'm not yeah. looking at my phone by the way i'm just like i can't remember all don't the worry. questions i ask not judging okay uh so we right. have an awesome team so yeah we're seeing some like incredible growth right now and then also you know speaking to what i said before like we started we created everest with this like intention to create something that was more environmental but also high performance but actually what we discovered after having it in the market for a couple of years and getting all this feedback from customers is that it was actually incredible, as I kind of alluded to before, for scalp health, hydrating your scalp, mm -hmm. healthy hair growth, um, and so many testimonials from customers about that. So we're actually doing more clinical research on that specifically, and you'll see us probably lean further into that direction as we grow. Uh, as a person who is surrounded by females, strong females, like Marina is one of three I love girl Marina. siblings. I, I love also, Marina. I also love <laughs> Marina. Um, but I hear about female hair loss. It's such a huge thing. I did not know. Oh, huge, especially after COVID. It's like, a lot obviously of it is this like, is resonates with me. It's so. huge. A lot of it is like stress induced. A lot of people have it as like a long-term effect from COVID. Yeah. But also a big one too is like, as you age, your scalp ages six times faster than your face. Ooh. So as your skin gets drier so and your scalp, scalp needs Botox. Yeah, your scalp. Needs yeah. Botox. I don't know if that would help. Um, but as your sc your skin and your scalp gets drier, the quality like your quality of your hair gets mm. drier. It gets coarser. It gets more brittle. It breaks more easily. So if you can keep your scalp hydrated mm -hmm. with a formula that has a lot of skincare ingredients in it, you keep that quality of hair. So your hair stays youthful. It stays lush. It stays shinier and bouncier. So that is kind of the feedback that we're getting from our customers on Everest that we'll lean into more. So there's moisturizing product in your... Yeah. So 50%. So instead of water, half of the formula, literally half of that tube is aloe vera, which helps... Skincare. Reduce, yeah. Skincare. Aloe vera and glycerin. So glycerin so is So I'm going to use this. Yeah. Like, even though I don't have hair, I can rub this on my, like, totally. head. And I'm like a, like a Your head will be, like, so soft and, like, I, feels so like moisturized. It's just, like, generally, like, a face wash yeah. for me. It's I, almost, like, has that, like, combined effect. Would you do a face wash? We get it asked for it all the time. Yeah. We might. I would yeah. I would rock that. You would love it. A hundred percent. It's so good. Because it doesn't strip. It feels almost like you're cleansing, but you're left with, like, moist, moisture after, which is a really unique feeling. Okay. I want to jump back into the entrepreneurship thing. Okay. Um, so you're now like boss bitch status. <laughs> I don't think of myself that way, but yeah. Uh, I mean, objectively. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, do you, have you ever encountered or been in rooms where male or female, but most likely male, there's intimidation and how does it, how does it present itself and how do you deal with it? Such a good question. Honestly, no. I have That's not, great. there's, there's two, there's different, I've seen it manifest in different ways. I okay. haven't seen that exact expression of it Two other things I've seen. So I've seen, um, I've seen, especially if looking at like maybe like potential investors or like venture mm -hmm. capital, all that stuff. I've seen different investors of all kind of classes and kinds, not see the value in beauty. Right. So that's one thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of like tech investment, especially in like Canada and Toronto specifically. Tech te when Jess and I first started raising money, it was like, oh, tell me about your tech company. Yeah. Like, well, we're starting a beauty company, but yeah. like there's, it's good, like so much potential and techie. lots of growth. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. So that's one, one way is people not, unless they 
are a user of these type of products, like seeing the value and the innovation, but obviously the value is there and the growth is there and the, right. the margins are there. It's a great offer. Um, so that's one side. And then sometimes too, like I've seen maybe more in like corporate environments coming from some of the big beauty companies, I've seen more competition almost between women than men. Oh, um, I guess like that. This industry is very yeah. It can be like competitive, focused. but also what I will say on that note is for every example of that that I've seen, I've seen five or more examples of supportive women, and especially on the founder journey, I have an incredible and sort of just an incredible group of like female founders, women founders that we are really close with that share information, and it has been game-changing to our business, but right. also game-changing to our mental health. A lot of them are mothers as well, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do this without that group and without those relationships. It's almost like when you become a mom and it's so isolating and you find your like mom friends, it's mm -hmm. like that like group of like founder, your founder friends. friends. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes all of the difference, especially for it, me. It is, it's worth noting, it is a super lonely journey. Exactly. Nobody filled gets with it. rejection. Yeah, yeah. Like filled, yeah. It's 99% rejection. Definitely. And then you get 1% glory. And then you're back to rejection yeah. again. Because you exactly. have to like move on to your next exactly. hurdle or hump or exactly. whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and are you guys going to, are you done raising equity? Mm, undecided. 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 You don't need it. Though. We don't need to. Yeah. But we think there might be some cool growth opportunities. If we so, can. okay. Can I ask some non, they're definitely specific because like I want <laughs> to get into the details and most of the people that listen to this are businessy and yeah, they yeah. like, they'll want to know. I may not answer them, but you can ask. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Whatever, man. Shoot yeah. your shot. It's yeah. Right. Shoot <laughs> your shot. Let's see. Um, do you, do you remember what you did? You did, did you do a seed round? No, we did a pre-seed before okay. we launched, and we have a group of small, a small group of strategic investors that okay. have been with us from the beginning, and we've done a couple bridges with them, and that's. And they've topped up, and then yeah. like that's it. Yeah. Uh, if you had to guess your market, if you went public right now, how much do you think your company would be worth? <laughs> I won't answer that. I'll tell you. Really? Later. Yeah. <laughs> a billion dollars. Yeah, a billion dollars. <laughs> um, do you have, I'm going to ask some very leading Go questions it. here. Go for it. Uh, it's like over the lightning under, round. Yeah, yeah, over under seven figures annual revenue. At seven figures, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Um, At and above seven figures. Oops. I like that. Yeah. What is the average, yeah. non specific yeah. profit margin for beauty products? That I won't answer but i will say in general beauty yeah, in is general. quite in beauty in general beauty is quite good i think our products are probably a little bit more expensive to make which is why they're a little bit more premium priced right um but we have a, a decent margin on them as well okay um what would be the next game changing like leap like what would take you from where you are right now to Eight figures, nine figures. Yeah. Of revenue. Honestly, I think it's just time with the growth that we're on. Yeah. Part of it is time. Um, and also some strategic partnerships with maybe a big beauty retailer that we are exploring. May or may not be exploring. May or may not yeah. be exploring. Yeah. Uh, do you remember what Kagar is? K kind of, but not really. Compounded yeah. annual growth rate. Yeah. 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 Do you know your Kagar? Is it in like percentages? It's in percents. Like. It's basically like your IRR, but for growth. Like monthly. I, I'm not going to say. I'll tell you yeah. after. It's really good. Okay. Is it? <laughs> yeah. So you're growing. Uh, like growing triple digits. Most yeah. people are like proud to say these numbers. I know. You know, you're. you're Jess is very like secretive over. No, not secretive, really? but like protective over the numbers. So I got to be careful. She's like my sister. Yeah. My sister's like a vault. <laughs> You can't get any information out of her. It's yeah. like, and I like poke and prod. Yeah. I was like, yeah. one way to ask this question. I will say, here's what I'll say. We have doubled the business every year since we've launched. Amazing. But we are, have more than, we're doing more than that now. Which is wicked. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, Jamie uh, is using my house as a supply depot now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I literally was like, hey, Bassam, I got a haul six boxes from my trunk yeah. for someone on my team to come pick them up on their way to the Have you outgrown your first 
supply warehouse? Um, yes, we've moved three PLs already from one in Canada to a, a new one in Canada and one in the US, and we've also moved our full supply chain, which was a huge nightmare, but worth it. Yeah, I'm just like like indirectly asking for like the growth numbers. <laughs> uh, people, you guys can put this to the story together yourself. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a lot, especially the last like we're on like a the last like six months we're on like a pretty aggressive growth track. Uh, a couple more, and then I will stop prodding you with questions. Uh, advice that you could give somebody that is about to start an entrepreneurial journey, especially somebody that's been in corporate for, you know, their entire working career? Um, well, first, you just have to do it. <laughs> if you, It's what you truly want. And make sure that you truly, truly want it. Right. Not just, you know, like the idea of it. it you want to be in it and be through all the ups and downs. So make sure you really want it. And if you truly, truly want it, there's really no other way than just doing it, right. you have to get started. Yeah. And then the other advice I would give is like surround yourself by with other founders or people who are doing something similar who are at your stage or maybe even just a little bit ahead. Mm -hmm. So you have this sounding board and kind of a, a resource for information. Find that like community because you will need it to sustain you through a lot of the ups and downs. Like just to survive the mental yeah. part of it. Yeah, the mental part is like a, a trip, a real trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fact. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, listen, I have had a delightful experience trying to pull your revenue numbers from you. <laughs> We're going to need to go off camera so I can find out these details for myself. Um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and like blessing us with another very successful entrepreneurial story. Thank you. Um, if you guys don't know already, please check out Everest. It's legit awesome i just smelt the products for the first time okay. they're really good and now that i know that you have a body wash line i can actually Perfect be a customer you. yep um but jamie thank you so much for being on the show thanks Bassam. that was so fun oh it was my pleasure well that's another episode of the Bassam hannah podcast thank you so much for tuning in to check out this episode and all of our other previous episodes, you can go to basimhanna.com. That's B-A-S-E-M-H-A-N-N-A.com. Or you can check us out on Spotify, YouTube. Um, we post reels and stories uh, on Instagram as well as TikTok. Till next time, peace.